Welcome to College Place United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here. Will you stand with us as we sing our opening song? No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be, no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. Come to Christ, that living stone, rejected by the world, but in God's sight, cho chosen precious. We have responded to Christ's call and seek to be built into a spiritual house, a living reminder of God's presence on earth. Once we were no people, but now we are God's people, called out of the darkness into God's marvelous light. Therefore, we sing with the church in all ages. Blessed be your name, O God, our Redeemer. By your mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Let us unite our hearts and voices together in our opening prayer. Eternal light, shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal piety, have mercy on us. That with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Psalter lesson this day comes from Psalm 27, verses 1 and 4 through 9. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above all my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy, and I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. New Testament lesson this day comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I, mean that, what I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, and I belong to Christ. Has yet Christ been di- divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the house of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with elegant wisdom, so that the cross of Christ may not be emptied of its power. And let us stand together for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 through 23. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zephilim, Zebulun and land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The word of God. Jesus went through Capernaum, throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
turn on our microphone before we start? My fault. It is good for us to be able to welcome uh, the distinguished young women uh, today uh, to College Place. They were here yesterday in, in our fellowship hall doing work and time together, and so we're glad that you came. Uh, you didn't spend the night in the building, but you came, felt like it, I'm sure, this morning when it was time to get up. But uh, it's great to have you this morning, and in case you're viewing at home from the camera and you see all these heads at the back of the front row, that means the whole sanctuary is full. You don't know what you're missing, but you didn't get wet getting here. So welcome uh, to those who are viewing online as well. Uh, it is so awesome for us this day to be a part of the youngest congregation in Greensboro this morning, uh, on average. So I, I'm grateful for that. Thank you all for being here. Uh, and it's today when we come together to talk about uh, the calling of Jesus' disciples. Um, this year has been a whirlwind since Christmas. So all of a sudden we were there at Christmas. We had New Year's Day that fell on a Sunday, so we waited to have the wise men show up on the 8th instead of the 6th. Last week we baptized Jesus, and this week he's already starting the ministry as a result of John being baptized or being arrested. And uh, Jesus begins to call his disciples together, talking about a whirlwind tour. We jokingly always say that those of us who go to seminary prepare three years for 30 years worth of ministry. Jesus prepared 30 years for three years worth of ministry. It should say something to us, perhaps, that the very Son of God has to take a little longer to prepare than we humans do. And yet, at the same time, that's where we are. Jesus is beginning his ministry. John has been arrested. And so Jesus goes off to Capernaum. Capernaum is, you know, outside the norms. It's not like the big town, the big city. It's, in fact, it's referred to as a galley of the Gentiles. So it's kind of like going away. It's, it's, it's not the place of influence and power. And yet, at the same time, it's important for us to remember that we still are in the season of Epiphany or after Epiphany when we remember the, the, the very manifestation of Jesus to all the world. The wise men show up as an aha moment. Jesus' baptism and the dove comes from the heaven. It's an aha moment. This is the Son of God. This is a revelation. And today when Jesus asks the disciples to follow them, tells them to follow him, it's an aha moment for them. A lot of us who've had professions, I'm sure, over the years have wondered about just packing up and doing something different. Sometimes we even refer to it as a midlife crisis. You know, the, the guy who goes out and buys some kind of fancy sport car that his knees barely allow him to get up out of at an older age or, or starts a completely different career. The one that's a scientist and suddenly wants to be a teacher or the one who is a preacher and becomes an electrician. You know those kind of stories? We hear about those from time to time. And yet, we don't know what to do with people like that. At least I don't. You might, you might be like, I'm a that all the time. You know, there's some people that seem like they do a different profession every six weeks. Good for them. I can't do it. After 20 years, I'm barely getting the hang of this one. And yet, at the same time, Jesus walks by these guys who are fishing, who are doing their 9 to 5 normal job whenever, whatever time they started, whatever time they ended. Their normal job that they were used to, they were doing it with the nets, throwing them into the boat, catching fish. And Jesus just simply walks by them and says, Hey, you, follow me, and I'll make you fish. The old King James Version that's imprinted in my brain. Well, I will make you fishers of men. But the Greek really implies both men, women, all people coming together. So that's what the New Revised Standard Version tries to do with it. Jesus invites his disciples to follow after him, and they become fishers of all people. You know, that's an image that you don't hear a whole lot of. There is, in, in, the, in John, there's the passage after the resurrection where the fishermen are out there all night long and haven't catched any, caught anything. And the disciples, tell, Jesus tells the disciples to cast on the other side of the boat and they bring in 153 fish. Those who might not be used to steam heat, that's steam heat, we're about to get warm. The building walls are not going to fall in on us, Hopefully. 
but they catch 153 fish, which represented at the time all the nations of the world that they knew came together into that net under the command of Jesus. But otherwise, there, there are places in which Jesus talks about him being a shepherd, but not so much a fisherman. But this story today is a place in which that image arises. I will make you fish for people. The thing I just don't get is they do it. What? Why? Why would you take the livelihood, what you know, what's the standard, what's the... And all of a sudden, begin to follow after Jesus. Well, I think part of it would be that Jesus was the very Son of God who issued the invitation. That might have a little more power than if I said, follow after me. Jesus begins to call the disciples together. For today, in this passage, all of a sudden begin to follow after him. Everything that they've known, everything that they understand has suddenly been transformed in their lives. It's different. It's different. Sometimes we talk about calling as far as sometimes in, in ministry. Oh, what's your calling? We'll ask that on candidates. They better have an idea and understanding, a, a three-minute elevator speech to be able to articulate their calling before some board of people that they've never met before. I'm like, this is intimate. This is personal. This is between me and God, some of the highest moments of my spiritual life. And you want me to just tell you a complete stranger? I don't know that I trust you. And yet they've got to. We talk sometimes about it like calling churches, call preachers into new ministry. In other denominations, that's how it works. We, in Methodist, the beauty of Methodism, we always have a preacher. May not like them, may be ready to get rid of them. But you've got one. And at the same time, that is our, our call lives into the conference. And but churches call preachers too into other denominations. Sometimes we talk about calling like, well, what are you called to do with your life? You know, calling takes place. It's not just about ordained ministry. It takes calling to be teachers and, and oh, nurses, doctors, lawyers, sound people, and all kinds of fun and different stuff that makes the world go round. Some of us just, you know, you have the niche and you find it. It's like a comfortable old sweater, you know? favorite sweatshirt, favorite sweater, that when it's a cold day and it doesn't matter what you do to get warm, it doesn't matter how much apple cider you drink, you're still not warm, and you put that old comfortable sweater on, and you're like, yes, this is right. It's time to rest and be present and to take a nap and to live life to the fullest. Yep, this is it. This is what I, my calling is, the comfortable part of our lives. Uh, let your life speak by Parker, Parker Palmer I couldn't remember that for a minute he talks about that part of our job in life is to find the greatest need of the world and our greatest desire and to allow the two to meet together and that's where we find our place in life that's the Jason version of what Parker Palmer wrote whatever the greatest need of the world and where we fit and where we match and where we go together. My mom's been working puzzles. Susan, you get this. You work puzzles all the time. Danny works puzzles. I don't know who else works puzzles. You know, but there are times in, in, when you're working a puzzle and the, the coloring on the puzzle piece is about the right color. It's about the right kind of shadow on that. And you're like, I know this puzzle piece fits here. And all of your trying, pushing, shoving does not work. Even if it does, then two minutes later, the other pieces won't connect to it. You know what that is? You know, that happened. It's enough to get you angry when you're working a puzzle. That's a sight to see. 
And yet, just taking that one piece of puzzle and moving it just one space over makes a whole world of difference. And it's about getting the right piece at the right place at the right time. Jesus partly says in this passage that the, the gospel writer says that the kingdom is here. Now, scholars kind of argue back and forth. Does that mean that when Jesus arrives, that the kingdom of God has arrived on the earth? Well, we would, could say yes. I can see that. The argument could be made. Do we say that the kingdom of God is, is coming because of Jesus' presence? He's the, 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 the inbreaking of that kingdom into the world? We could say that, yes. And we could say that our life and our world is, is about ready to be transformed because of the presence of Christ in it. And that's still unfolding in our lives this day. It's both the here when Jesus arrives and it is the future when he arrives. The decision to follow after Jesus is life-changing and it requires some life changes in our world. Going through that process, you know, they're like, oh, well, how did your life change between when you were a Christian and when you weren't Christian? Oh, there are radical changes in people's lives that when they, they realize their great need of forgiveness, when the need for change in their life, when their dependence upon Christ is all that they can depend on at that moment, that there is this, this justifying spirit of grace that wells up in our souls and that allows for transformational living. That the person who begins and the person who leaves is two different people. Some of you have heard me tell this story, and others of you haven't. In the early church, in baptism, part of what they did was, was sometimes there would be a, a pool that would be in the shape of a cross that was made three steps in, three steps out, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, that's good design, yeah. And so the person uh, in the early church would be completely stripped naked. You're leaving your old self behind, everything about that, and you enter into this pool of water, these three steps down, and then you would, and oftentimes, because of the limited amount of water, that you would have to kneel down into these pools of water, and then you would, they would pour water over your head, they would hold it pitcher and say, do you believe in God? And you say, yes, and they would pour water over the person's head. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? And they would pour water over the person's head when they said yes. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? They would pour water on the person's head when they said yes. And then they would stand up, if they could, and walk the three steps out to the other side and be given an alb like this. This is the white alb that was given to newly baptized peoples and symbolizing the new birth and the new life and the newness that comes from following after Christ. To be born anew as a new person. Baptism never means that we're going to be perfect people, that we're never going to get everything just right and do everything right and just, you know, just be a little saint with a glowing halo. That's not going to be what's happened. But it does remind us that God has claimed us as God's own people. It reminds us that we are beloved, that we're engrafted into God's family. And that we begin to live life anew with new lens in our heart and in our minds and in our, the way we see the world, the way that we see other people. Because we realize that that too is part of our family and God. Man, I don't know if I want to be one of these disciples or not. It's kind of getting a little bit scary. When it changes us and the way that we see our life. Some of us in the church were baptized long ago in our parents' arms. You know, we call it infant baptism and Methodism. We believe that God's Spirit is working, God's grace is there present and helping our, through our parents, through our guardians, through those who bring us forth to be baptized, that we, they are answering on our behalf these questions. Do you believe? Do you believe? Yes. It's on ours. I wasn't, I don't remember it. Too young, don't remember it. And yet at the same time, because of that gift that's given from God to us, that we're claimed as part of God's people. Nothing ever, 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 ever can take that away from us. 
But now the choice of what we do with that is ours. That we begin to, to live into this calling in our lives, this baptism, and how we respond to God's goodness and God's gift to us. That we can go forth into the world. That we too have been issued the invitation to follow me by Jesus. It transforms all the world for us. Everything is different. Calling is responding to God's calling. And it begins to help us see through God's eyes and through God's heart. These disciples, they didn't have any idea what they were getting into when Jesus issued the invitation to follow them. But at the same time, Christ never left them alone. He was always with them to care for them and about them throughout their life and throughout all of eternity, just as it is for us when we respond to God's goodness and grace. Oh, glory, honor, and power be to the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, open our hearts and minds this day so that we might respond with joy to what we have heard. Fill us with your grace, renew our spirits, renew our faith. And today we pray for our world. We lift up to you places that are in turmoil. We pray for refugees and immigrants who are fleeing war and violence. We pray for the people of Iran. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for world leaders, that we might seek peace, that we might live into your freedom and live in cooperation with each other. We pray for our own leaders in our own country. We pray for those in California who are recovering and rebuilding after floods. We pray that we might seek ways to help those in need and live in ways that care for our planet. We pray for those who've died from another mass shooting. We pray for places in our country where gun violence continues to ring out and hate fills our streets. Help us to seek your peace, O oh God. 
Help us to work together for your good. Help us to use our own power to speak up and stand up for those who are most vulnerable in our society and world. We pray for those in our own city, for those who struggle every day, for the more than 50,000 people who live in poverty in our own city, for those who go without homes, without food, without support, without care. We especially pray for the children of our community who need love and safety and health and education. Help us to reach out and offer care and warmth and love and resources so that others might live fully in this world. And finally, we pray for our church and for this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We pray that we might be a light to those in need. Help us to follow your call to live more fully into your kingdom. Help us to be a place that radically welcomes those who are oppressed, those who need a community of support and love, those who are lonely and lost in this world, those who need a place to call home. Help us to overcome the hatred in our own lives and the hatred in this world that disenfranchises and oppresses others. Help us to confront our own hypocrisies. Empower us to stand against war and violence and racism and bigotry and sin in every form it takes. Help us, O oh God, to follow your call to walk more boldly into your kingdom. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus who loves us and sustains us and continues to call us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So today we may remember his love, his life, and his calling upon our life. And we remember that he is with us now. Even as we pray together the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My name is Robert Brewer. I serve as the Director of Outreach and Worship Arts here at College Place. We're honored to have you worshiping with us today, whether you're in person or online. If this is your first time, there's a welcome card that you can fill out and place in the offering plate, and we can get you connected to uh, the ministries here at College Place. If you're a college student, there's a bright neon card. You can do the same. Our Sunday night live worship service will be tonight at 7 p.m., which is geared toward college students. We have communion as well, but all people are welcome. That's at 7 p.m. tonight here. Our college uh, small group uh, Bible study meets at 945 in the fellowship hall, so you're invited to join us there. The adult Sunday school class meets in the chapel at the same time. Our church council meets on Monday at 630, so if you're on church council, remember that meeting in the John Wesley room. Next Sunday, the Girl Scouts will be here after church to have uh, cookies available to buy. If you'd like to uh, order uh, ahead, you can uh, email Lauren Selliers or talk to me, or it's in our uh, newsletter. The information is there. But they will be here next Sunday for Girl Scout Cookie Sunday. This month, we're also collecting markers and pencils and crayons from the Colors of the World series for Peck Elementary, which is our elementary school we connect with. Uh, we collect them for this month, so they might have them next month for crafts and things and for uh, Black History Month that they'll be celebrating, doing educational work with that. And so we are collecting the supplies for that. So if you'd like to give, please do so before the end of the month so that we can give that to them soon. All these are ways in which we connect with each other in our congregation, and we are so glad that we can do this ministry together, and we have new people becoming part of this ministry today, and we are celebrating that we have someone joining our congregation to become um, a member, and Jason's going to lead us in that. Down to the front. Here, we can go back here. So we'll keep our little space. And 
I don't get tripped up. That's fine. Yeah, come on up here. Yeah, either way, whatever, which way you want to come. Uh, Beth is a uh, familiar face around here. She's sung in the choir for a couple years, three years, four years. Since you were a freshman. Since you were a freshman. Okay, all right. So, uh, so it's, been a, it's been a while. Uh, she also is a very familiar face at Spartan Open Pantry on Tuesday, Wednesday nights. So we have seen her, and she uh, wishes to join College Place uh, in transferring her membership from uh, Mount Zion in Cornelius. Uh, so um, we only have one question to ask of her since she's a United Methodist. Uh, we are only going to ask her, as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. I will. I will. Beth, it's great to have you as a member of College Place, and we look forward to journeying with you for many years to come. Great to see you. Thanks. Yay. Be sure to welcome Beth after our worship. Uh, uh, weekly through the choir and through your ministry and our um, Bible study as well, and a leader at Wesley Luther at UNCG. And uh, not only is Beth a leader here, but so are you. And you can give your presence, your witness, your service, your time as well. And we have an opportunity to give to God a part of what God has given to us today. And if you'd like to give, uh, you may do so at the entrance on your way out the door to put an offering in that plate. Or if you'd like to mail a check to the church office, you can do that. You can also give with a QR code on your bulletin and online on the donate button if you're watching there. But all of these ways are supporting the ministry that we do here at College Place. And we invite you to do that today as we join in that celebration. So thank you for your work. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for your gifts. And thank you for your presence and time as we reach out to build the kingdom of God here in this world, in this place, in this city, on this corner. I invite you as people of God to stand in praise and thanksgiving as we sing together our doxology. I invite you to remain standing as we say together our affirmation of faith. This is a statement from the Korean Methodist Church. Let us join together. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. 
we believe in the final triumph of righteousness and the life everlasting. Amen. People of faith, go forth into the world renewed through the Spirit of Christ to be with us, to guide us in all that we do, to love and serve God in all that we do. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.